Thanks, Dane. You did a great job on that demo tonight. I'm going to go oh, to bed. I appreciate that, sir. Thank you. All right. A second, right, Mark. Thanks, Dane. You bet. Good night, all. You bet, Steven. Good night now. Thank you, Dane. Night, you know, you guys, uh, SWAT. Take care. All right, dude. Fun, Jim. All the best. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. We'll see y'all at SWAT. Okay, Howard. All right, Howard. All right, Howard. Good night, Gary. I'm leaving here between 10 and 11 in the morning. That'll put me there. Oh, probably around two. No, oh, you got a short drive. Nice. Yeah, about four hours, three and a half. I'm trying to leave at one for San Antonio, so it's going to be kind of rough. Yeah, I'm, what is I'm that, about an hour? Leave... No, from San Antonio. It's uh, it's three and a half, four hours, depending on how you go. Oh, okay. uh, it usually takes me over to Seguin up the toll road, which is I don't have a problem with, because then I bypass all that traffic on I thirty five, which is always horrendous. Oh yeah, I was going to look at two eighty one, the back way, you know. Yeah. Oh, that's how I went from Austin. We brought two eighty. I think 281 out of somewhere outside of Austin to Waco when I went through there a couple years ago. Yeah, they Backwoods. finished that new they finished that new toll road up a few years ago that bypasses Austin and that's it's a great thing. But the Sometimes it going takes up, me up like 35 eight. as far as Buda and then it kicks me over. So I don't know, we'll see. It's nearly twenty dollars to do the whole run on that tollway now. Uh, I don't care. <laughs> it, it's the, I, I, if it's, I know it's, I'll, I'll gladly pay the twenty dollars to save all that traffic. Yeah. Now I came through, you know, some toll road. I can't remember what it was, and I ne I never got a bill in the mail. I don't know if somebody was riding my bumper to where they couldn't couldn't get a picture of my tag or, or what it was, Possibly. but I, you, know. you never know. No, it sure doesn't happen in Oklahoma going through uh, 40 and 44, and they snap that picture quicker and shit. And they have that they have that um, bill already mailed off to you before you, you're even out of the state of Oklahoma. Ain't that right, Gary? Nice. Uh, he must be away. At least you're not at the merchants. Were you talking to me? I didn't hear. <laughs> no, I was talking to Gary in Oklahoma. Oh, get the other Gary. Okay. The other Gary. <laughs> That'd be the OG we're Gary. Kilgore, Texas. So we're about we, we were on the phone with John Sowell. So we were... <laughs> we got hey, Gary. Yes. When for well, those ladies that you're bringing up. Any chance you'd be able to bring up uh, the gouges too? Since how they ain't gonna have a label well, to use them on? I'm rolling. Okay. Yeah, I've got six beginner sets of tools. That'll work. Yeah, so, with chucks and all know, of that. So we'd we'd bring with. a whole kit. Sounds I'll just have to have some help making sure we hang on to all of them. Well, yeah, for sure. Um, we will uh we will be policing that, uh making sure everything is marked and right. identified before it before it goes into use and, and then it's gonna be up to the also gonna be up to the people that you know for the pods, you know, to make sure nothing is walking off and yeah, I saw you I sent yeah. you a fix. Yeah. Need anything sprouting legs and oh. <laughs> someplace else. Wake you up. You look like you were Getting a good mouth. Yeah, that I'm. We have all those with each leg. We don't. We don't have a full ten, set of ten, but we got six yeah. sets, and we're yeah. working on seventh right now. I'll talk to you. Okay. For the most part, you only need only going to need four tools. You know, five if you include the skew. Yeah. Um. You know, yeah, parting tools. Early cut. 
just the basics, you know. Yeah, basic stuff's what we got. Yeah. Then we got the uh, G3s on all of them. Yeah, it'll be perfect and for the size of the projects anyhow. So four prong. Absolutely. We've got got the little G3s and the four spikes. That can be dangerous. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we got enough to we got enough to set up part of wonder that. If yep. We might yeah. be able to get. Wonder if we might be able to get Rockler to donate a two or three. Yeah, who knows? We'll cross that road later. Later on down, when it comes yeah. to the Rocklers. Yeah. yeah. Next year or so, I may ask the rocker people here. No. Oh. Now you could have choked to death, you know? Oh. That'd be nice. Well, the biggest, the biggest thing is to ask some of the older members that are you in your so much, local clubs. You know, so yeah. If you have any extra tools you don't want you, that you don't use anymore, donate them. Right. Well, that's good. Yeah. Oh, maybe Eddie can go grab his tools from that kid that he gave everything to. That's not for um, on a loaner basis. Yeah. Uh -huh. A friend of mine has a turning school here south of town. I may ask him if I can borrow a couple of sets to take with me. He may let me. We'll see. Well, as tall as you are, you might have got up there close to his nest. So he's teaching classes? Late turning classes? Yes. yes. Great. Yeah. Yeah, I think he has Six uh -huh. student lathes. And he's not teaching all the time, so there is a chance I might be able to persuade him. Uh -huh. Bring him with you, that way he want to, he'll want to. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna try I'm gonna try that. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness. That's funny. Depends on but he's he's also yeah. a production turner, so it, it might it might run into his you know, wherewithal. Yeah. So we'll see. Okay. Yeah. All right, well I'll let you some of y'all know him. I know Joaquin knows him. Yeah. All right. Talk to you later. All right, bye. That was about James Carter, Joaquin. Yeah, he's been down and uh, demoed with Easy Wood Tool twice for us. I, uh, <clears throat> I like. Yeah, he's he's a lot of fun. I'm, he and I have taken a couple of classes together and taught up there in Fort yeah. Worth. And uh, yeah, he's a good turn. Hey. He's a good dude. Yes, he is. We we make it a point to embarrass Rebecca DeGroote at least once a year at SWAT. That is one fantastic little lady. I'm telling you, she's yes, she is. fun. Uh, she just lights up the room when she walks in, you know. Yes, she does. She just is incredible. Hey, hey, Billy. Not only is she talented wood turning, you just, if you haven't seen her tattoos, you're missing oh, something. Yeah. Holy crap. Yeah. She can tattoo better than anybody I ever saw. I was going to get yes, one. Howard. Do it. Mm -hmm. Hey, Billy. Yes, Howard. Did you uh, give a piece for that uh, to be given away? At the, the three and one? Meeting? Yes, sir. Well, that's a beautiful piece. Beautiful piece. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I, I'm. I I was asked to. I was asked if I would be willing to donate a piece 
for this three and one this year and I was honored to be asked. So yes, I am I did one specifically for SWAT. Now what is the three and one? What does that mean? That's the raffle. They they sell raffle tickets. Right. And 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 people will be pestering you to buy raffle tickets pretty much all weekend, but it's okay. And so uh, But the Saturday three and night, one, what does that mean? For the three and one. Uh well the once the tickets that- all the tickets all go back for the drawing for the lathes, but there's there's the drawing at the banquet on Saturday night, and and there's another drawing before then, I think. Yeah, and there's... then there's there's three drawings, so you got three chances to win. So that's why it's three and one. You buy one raffle ticket or one set of raffle tickets or whatever you want to buy, and you still got three chances to win at all of the drawings. And so at those raffles Saturday night is when they give away the the donated pieces. So so all the winners of the first if they draw if, they go back into the drum to be drawn for the second time. Then they so it right. goes back in. It goes yeah. back in. Right. Yeah, okay. the tickets go back in, so you all got right. three tests. That makes sense. Yeah, it's really neat. The, well, the, when, the, when are the you... tickets aren't that expensive, and all of the money goes back into SWAT to be able to put this on again next year. Yeah. Joaquin, when are you demoing? They got me that demoing twice on Saturday. Saturday, okay. Yeah, 10 o'clock and 4 o'clock, all in one day. Now, I kept looking for the schedule, but I couldn't find it, so. It's on the website now. Oh, is it? Yeah. You got you got to listen it's... for it, you know, on the website. It's hard to choose because, you know, there's two or three people you want to see and they're all demoing. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's, I have to go through it three or four times and circle what I want and then sometimes scratch it out and change my mind. And yeah. That's all right, though. Yeah. Did you see that umbrella that uh, Sammy Long did last year? Little old umbrella and it was pierced. Anyway, it's beautiful. He's going to demo that this year. Oh, wow. I've had a couple of classes. I don't, I'm don't. sure I saw it. That would be cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But there's so much there that's always cool. I know. Now, usually, now just because they've got this set up or sent out the schedule, that is, um, it, it, it almost always, if you've printed it out before you go, when you get there, there will be some changes because somebody has issues or something, something comes up, and one of the demonstrators uh, has to change places with somebody else, but that's okay too. Now, y'all have a pin turning class don't you your club uh yeah. the san antonio club no it's, no, it's alamo alamo that has I, well alamo training. yeah i, I okay. guess i you know i still haven't joined that club well, i'm ashamed of myself okay i need to i just it's hadn't got around to it. i just hadn't got around to it yeah our secretary moved away up around the bronzeville and she's uh, involved with Alamo, James Carter, and she's going to be part of the pin turning. Really proud. Oh. Brenda Michaels. Cool. I'm, I'm looking forward to Rita's demo. Yeah. She's already demoed that. Well, she taught it at Arrowhead. Uh, this past summer. Oh, cool. Yeah. Where's Arrowhead? It's um, there, Tennessee, somewhere around Tennessee in that area there. Oh, you, oh, you yeah. mean Aramont? Aramont, yeah, yeah, I meant that. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, I know where that's that's in Pigeon Forge, I think, or Gatlinburg, one of the two. Okay. Gatlinburg. I haven't made it yet. I always put a drawing, put my ticket in there for drawing. Yeah, me too. I haven't made it yet either. I lived right near there for a year, and I never didn't make it. Yeah, yeah I lived in Greenville. But, uh, yeah. not, not a lot of people know, in Waco, there's a mammoth dig there. Where yes, and a, and a mammoth museum. Yeah, they got trapped into in a rainstorm and down in a valley, and they built a enclosed building over this dig and you can go visit there and see the remains and stuff of the dig it's very impressive really yeah. all i've ever been to is yeah. uh Linrose. but what about the texas ranger museum not that either yeah it's pretty interesting plus the, and doctor the dr pepper museum <laughs> <laughs> I was really impressed with the mammoths. And they're bigger than the woolly mammoth because they're from Texas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my wife went to all those that one year she had company me to SWAT because she wasn't interested in hanging around and doing any of the other stuff. Yeah, that's how I got involved was with my wife. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody, I'm going to call it a night. It's been fun. All right, Terry. Terry, you're in charge. Yeah. Saturday. You're in charge Saturday. Uh, I said you're in charge Saturday. Oh, I'm in charge Saturday. Yeah. Glenn, not gonna be there either. Glenn said you was in charge. Oh, no. Glenn's president forever. <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah. Until we get until we get Tom in there, <laughs> but I'll be there. <laughs> Okay. Well, I'm president, so you're going to be in charge. <laughs> we got a learning turn, turn coming up Saturday. We're, I'm going to miss. I'll be there. I know it. Well, Lord willing. Bruce will be waiting on you. I'll try not to do anything dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty good at it, though. Okay, good night, all. Good night, Terry. Good night. Good night, man. So were we uh, talking about the Waco Mammoth? National Monument. Am I looking at the right thing? I don't Probably. know. If it's a monument or, or what? It's uh, but uh, it's a dig, and uh, they uh, it is sure that's it. Art. Okay. I'm looking. That'll be something to do after Swan on Sunday. Yeah. Thanks for the tip. You bet. Uh, I guess it is a national park. Yep. Huh? I was unaware of that, but it is. Which one is? A uh, national monument. Oh, the, the, the mammoth. Yep. It's a national monument. It's a cool place to go. And if you are a retired vet or disabled vet, you can get in free. You, you get a free park pass. Never expires for national parks, that is. Yeah. Yep. I got mine. For veterans. Do what? And of course, they're free for veterans. Yes. And most state parks. But guys, I'm going to go. I got some last minute things to do. I got a six hour drive, six or seven. And yep, you do. Look forward to seeing you. Same see here, buddy. Guys next Wednesday night. Take care. All right. Have fun, Joaquin. Have a good one. Enjoy. 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 Travels. For sure. <laughs> All right. I'm going to or Clint. Billy, keep everybody sure. in line. I'm going to go take care of the cat and I'll be right back. 
me to care, keep everybody in line? Okay. <laughs> That's asking a lot, dang. Y'all, y'all heard the man. <laughs> you're 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 the round head you're the round headed fella right now, so <laughs> Hey, I shave my head sometimes. He don't know what he's asking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate. This weekend is going to be fun, I'm telling you. Did any of you guys turn peach? I've not. I, I have turned apricot and I have turned nectarine. I, I have not turned peach. Yes, it but turned I'm sure a pen out of peach for. I'm sure, sure it's the same. For uh, Peach Park, the owner of Peach Park down in Clinton, Alabama, wanted one out of a peach limb. Cracked uh, like crazy. Most? We had to glue it back together half a dozen times during the turn. So, but by the time really, we got through it, it was real pretty. I haven't uh, had the cracking the problem with, with the apricot or nectarine. Um, there, and so it kind of surprises me that peach wanted to crack like that because most pit, most pitted fruit trees like peach, apricot, plum, uh, cherry, it, they all are beautifully, is beautiful to turn. At least in my experience, from what I've turned. But like I said, I have not turned peach. Yeah, I had a neighbor uh, bring me over a pretty nice uh, branch, about six eight six eight inches in diameter, cool. and about two foot long. 16 inches in diameter, and it was a branch? No, no, six to eight. Wow. Six to six eight, to eight Gary. Six to eight inches. Peach tree? That's oh. still a big branch for a peach tree. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a huge branch for a peach. <laughs> yeah, six, six to eight inches is a big branch. You said the rest of it was so uh, wormy and rotted out. That this was the only piece that was that looked halfway decent. <laughs> so I don't know what I'm I looking, got. My... I'm looking forward to seeing what you do with it. It should turn a lot like cherry. Yeah. It really should. I I've turned wait. a lot of black. I've turned some black cherry. I've turned ornamental cherry. It turns. It turns. I, I love it. <laughs> I'm just hoping to get some more of that olive wood from those guys in Austin if they're at Swap this year. Well, I didn't get any uh, the, either of the last two years. I I, I didn't. I, a lot of it was was pretty cracked or had okay. had more voids in it than I wanted to deal with. But I may get some this year. I think my first time there was two or three years ago. I got some great pieces, but they were small. Oh, okay. yeah. I mean, even small, a, 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 an olive wood, a little olive wood box is, is gorgeous. I'm, I made a vase from a mother, and, you know, it was perfect. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you you. Oh, Gary, Howard, I hope you brought a way to bring wood back home with you because there's going to be tons of it for sale at really good prices there at SWAT. We're in my Sienna van on Sunday at 10 a.m. And we'd probably pack out half the van load with wood if we have to. <laughs> and now I know why Howard was asking where Tim's going to no, be part of it. Howard is asking what? I said, now I know why Howard asked Tim where he was going to be parked. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, we've got another club. We got another club member that's driving in Thursday. He'll be here Friday morning. And he's in a pickup truck all by his lonesome. We're gonna put our lathes in it. <laughs> yeah, we'll put our lathes in it. Wood in my van. <laughs> That'd be all right. <laughs> oh.
Well, I've never, I've never turned any mesquite. That's one piece of wood that I want to get a nice piece of mesquite to do. Tim's bringing with. some, so I'm sure if you let him know, he'll hang on to one for you. Okay. It's hard. Well, we're gonna stuff. be there by. We'll be there by noon tomorrow. So we're, yeah, you're not far away. Yeah, we're uh, two hours away or so. Yep. We put in. We put in eight hours today, and we're only gonna have to do two tomorrow, where we'll be rested up a little bit. Where'd you yeah, come from, Gary? You. Do what? Where'd you come from, Gary? North Alabama. Okay. I left Boaz and drove about an hour over to Coleman, picked up Howard and hit Interstate 65 and went to Birmingham and hit 20. Well, and we've been on it all day. Gary, as long as you and Howard ain't Auburn fans, we can be friends. <laughs> well, we're, roll tide. we're both Roll Tide fans, <laughs> but our secondary school in the state of Alabama is Auburn. <laughs> Oh, I know, but our biggest <laughs> rival is Auburn. <laughs> I went to graduate school at the University of Alabama, so I bleed crimson. Oh, did you? Oh, you did. Roll time. Yes. Yes, sir. Well, both of my kids graduated from there with master's degrees, and Howard had a few. I had, had, I had two went through there, and I had to build a building for them to get through. So... <laughs> We we think we built about half the campus with yep. what we spent putting yep. kids through school down there. <laughs> yep. So what'd you study, Billy? Biology. Okay. Freshwater biology. My so you, were, uh, you you were in Smith Hall? Mm-hmm. I was at, yep. Main campus, Tuscaloosa. Yep. We were when I was there, we were the, the stadium was being redone, so we the all the ball games were in Birmingham, but right, yeah, yeah. Well, roll tide. Yes, sir. Hey, we might like you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was going to wear really? my Alabama T-shirt tomorrow, but it it's it's dirty in the wash. So, really, my daughter was a cheerleader for oh, Alabama. Right. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, when I was there, I was teaching. Uh, I was a graduate teaching assistant, and I was teaching. Uh, I taught the lab for biology for non-science majors. A lot of athletes. <laughs> <laughs> they needed oh, some help. Well, didn't they? Was that they the, certainly was, did. Was that I also, the next best thing to basket waving? I, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I was teaching <laughs> biology for non-science majors, and I also, they asked me if I'd be willing to tutor. And this was back in 88. They asked me if I was willing to tutor for uh, $20 an hour if I would tutor the athletes. $20 an hour back in 1988. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was big money. That, that was big money. I said, so, of course I would. <laughs> so, so you was down there in the late 80s? Yes, sir. Yeah, my son was there from '85 to '90. Oh, cool. He was in a five-year plan. Cool. My daughter was there in '89 to '93. Yeah, I, 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 I think Alicia cheered '97 and '98. I think. So, so Bill, did you go into biology uh, occupation? Well, I started out that way. I, I left the University of Alabama. I had a teaching certificate already in the state of Texas. And I, I didn't really want to work in field biology because it didn't pay well. So I went to work teaching, which paid worse. And <laughs> I, I, taught, I taught in the public school system for a year. And then the Department of Defense offered me a job teaching big people making nine thousand dollars a year more. And I said, Let me think about this for a minute. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had that was good. Five, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I had five kids 
and my wife was going to college too. Wow. Uh, so she was a stay-at-home mom and did t- taking care of the kids and going to college and uh, so yeah, I I needed I, I needed that extra money. Wow. Yeah, I was I was paid a grand total of sixteen thousand seven hundred and twenty dollars a year, and had to have food stamps. Yeah, they're they're paying teachers a little better these days, but yeah, yep, they are not good enough. Mm-mm. No, not for all the crap they have to put up. How, Howard taught for nearly 40, 40 years. Yeah, Howard taught forty years. Forty years. So, what did you teach Karen Howard? Taught thirty-seven. <laughs> what did you teach Howard? About thirty years. So, uh, coming high school math. What, math what subject? Math teacher. Um, math. My wife's a retired math teacher. I had to be careful not to say math. It's math. <laughs> math. Yeah. <laughs> She's yeah, my, she she's taught for a little over twenty four years, but she started. My brother, late. my brother so teaches in Plano, so he's probably doing the best out of possible in Texas, but he's still unhappy. Yeah, she's glad they're she looking, retired. They're looking to move to Mexico next year. He wants to run a food truck. Ha <laughs> ha. They talked her into coming back last year for a year, and and she did. And she she told me she's about halfway through the school year last year. She said, "Never again." <laughs> I don't see how they handled it the last few years. Any of them? No, my wife. No, it's crazy. She was, she was like, uh, uh-uh. it, it's, it's not worth it anymore. Yeah, my, our oldest daughter is a, a special ed teacher. She's about to, okay. her, she's spec ed coordinator. She's, she's about to get her finish her master's in administration, so she's going to go into administration most likely. And yep. our, her husband is a high school. As a coach and social studies teacher, and he's awesome at his job. He works in an inner city school system here in San Antonio, and all the kids just absolutely love him to death. And our middle daughter is a clinical speech pathologist. Oh, my sis! My sister was a clinical speech pathologist in down in Pensacola, Florida. And so she's working with uh she's working in, in a school system in Spring, Texas, north of Houston. Howard, do you know at Florida? It doesn't matter how many years you teach, you can't retire until you can draw social security. Oh really? Wow. Say what? In in, in Texas. Only you can't draw. You the, can't. You can't draw your retirement until you reach Social Security age in Florida. Wow, in Texas, with the Texas retirement system, only some school districts are still taking Social Security. Uh, but uh, if once you retire, uh, you have to pay if you draw Social Security and your retirement. You have to pay. Uh, they call it a windfall, which uh, or, oh, yeah. or you just get like you just birds. get less, and it's it's ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. Because what's ridiculous about it is, my mother is a retired state employee, and she gets to take both her state retirement and her Social Security, no problems there. But why yeah. the teacher retirement system in Texas is the way it is. It pisses me off, actually. Yep, I can see that. Yep. Now, so when Florida, if I die if, before she does, then she'll get a, a tiny bit of my Social Security because of that wind, windfall. Uh, my sister, when she was in Florida, of course she 
reached her years to vest bef way before she retired, but they let her do five years. So five years from 65, she started at age 60 doing something like a drop program. Right. And they banked her money. Plus she drew her salary and banked extra money. And when she, when she quit, she had five years worth of salary, extra banks. It was, it was oh. wild the way that, the way that happened. It, there were tax benefits in the state. Oh, wow. and, and she, did the drop program. Yeah. Cool. So that was a benefit that they offered, but she still couldn't draw her state retirement until she reached 62 and a half. So she waited until she's 65 well, and then started going on. At 70, you got to start withdrawing it out. Yep. That drop. I'll see y'all later, guys. I'll try hey, to be back ahead. next week. Okay, y'all take right. care. All right. Have a good, good night. night. Guys, I think I'm going to say adios, too. It was a long drive today. I'm going to get some rest and be ready for tomorrow. And Some of y'all, I'll see you tomorrow late or early Friday morning, whenever you get there. When are you going to get I'll there, Billy? Work. I'll probably get there uh, somewhere between 2 and 3, I'm guessing. Okay. I'll be there around 5, probably. Okay. I won't be there. <laughs> we will miss Sorry you. Sorry to hear that, Roger. <laughs> we hate to hear that. Darn. <laughs> Missouri ain't all that far away, you know. Far enough, but if you start driving now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good night. See y'all later. Good night, good night, good night. Then there were 10. And one of us has to see a man about a dog. Uh-oh. Well, I already took care of mine. <laughs> that was a good demo, Dean. Who? Dane. Oh, there Dane. you go. Dane, yes. Thank you, Dan. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks, Dane. Yeah, you bet, Clint. Boxes are still one of those things I'm not doing yet, but I watch. Yeah. Yeah, they're they're fun to do. Especially once you get to get a few of them under your belt. Yeah, I got sick last week, so I didn't get them Christmas trees done. Now I'm under pressure to get them done. Uh-huh. How many you got to do? I, it's not many now. It's, uh, I had them half done, so there was 12 of them. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, you can knock them out. Just take your time. Yeah. Listen to the body. Yeah, I sold three mushrooms today. <laughs> Magic mushrooms or turn mushrooms? Turn. <laughs> I know you guys up here in Michigan do that funny stuff. Well, there's a lot of funny stuff, I'll tell you. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, my neck almost locked up on me. Quit just in time. I took that real quick break. Yep. That would have been a bummer. Like, yep, can't turn anymore. You should have just moved your headstock down to the end of the lathe. Well, I was going to, but then I had yeah, and then I'd have to monkey with the with the camera set up and like I ah, fuck it, I'll just it as is, you know, but yeah, it, it, it really takes a toll on me.
and I sliced the corner of my hand. I don't know how the hell I did that. Well, like, what, what tonight? tonight? That's, yeah, yeah. Camera. So too, too far left. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm, if I hit it with the a good sharp tool, one of the, one of the tools or what, you know. But yeah, I didn't notice yeah. it until a little bit ago. Mister, who's all coming? You didn't notice what? Lost. No, I sliced my. Where's the light at? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I see it. Yeah. Don't tell Brenda, but I did too. <laughs> right? And I don't know what on. I know, right? See, that's with me. I, I, I don't know. It, it had to have been one of the one of the tools, you know, scraper or the gouge or the skew. That's like a skew cut for sure, not a bowl gouge. That's pretty straight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know. So mine. No, but I had a log fall on my leg, and through the blue jeans and stuff, it just tore the shit out of my leg. So my skin's got to be really uh, thin. But I never even felt the it cut me or anything. I just felt it hit my leg, and I pushed it off to the side, and I kept going. And I looked down, my whole leg's all blood. <laughs> uh huh. Or when when you're walking, take a step, and and your and your socks going kind of squishy. Yep. <laughs> I have that all. That's what happened to me several years ago when when I had the old magnet rest doohickey for the for the tools laying up on the cabinets and that one inch skew fell off and came down and jabbed the back of my leg and you know so initially you know when i just looked at it i'm like oh yeah it's just a scratch and you know and then about 30 minutes later i was stepping and i'm like wow it you know, my heel kind of feels funny, you know, stepping and ah, shit, that thing was just a bleeding like a stuck pig. Well, I don't think we were the first last week, week, what, last week or week before last? <clears throat> One of those four blocks that I glued up to make that beads of courage box. I, I dropped it and I always turn in shorts and it caught me in the leg and ripped my leg oh. open about three inches uh-huh yeah. I, I felt it hit me and i thought oh crap and i looked down and i've just it's <laughs> blood running all down my leg of course the blood right. thinners doesn't help <laughs> yeah yeah amen yeah. i think you brought out i got that yeah. neuropathy and you don't feel it I you know i felt this <laughs> <laughs> Right. Yeah, it didn't feel good. <laughs> I was up at my mom and dad's farmhouse, and my dad had bought a whole bunch of screen doors with the glass in them, and wood cased windows with the glass in them. He was going to put them in this. Never got. It. I was rid of all that glass, and I put it over a little wagon and. Put a cardboard over it so it wouldn't come back at me, and I'm breaking the glass and getting it down in there. Well, a little piece of it come out and stuck me right in the ankle. I never felt it. Yep. My neighbor come over and he says, "Doesn't that hurt?" I said, it "Doesn't <laughs> hurt." <laughs> hey, Roger, I got a question for you. Okay. What, what angle did you cut those chevrons at? 45? 55. Yeah, uh, it's closer, closer to 50. 45 is okay. not enough. Okay. That makes you get sense. A real nice, I think I, you get a real nice write up for it, uh, Billy, and it'll be in the newsletter next week. Yeah, I think I cut the ones in that 
in that big hall of form I did. Uh, I think I cut those at 60. Second, uh, first class president was the If I remember right, because they're more, they're more pronounced, I think. Yeah. Well, I use my uh, board that I do all my segmented settings with. And right. this was the maximum angle I could get on it on one side. So, oh, did you cut them on a bandsaw or, I mean, on a table saw or you use a saw? saw. Okay. Actually, the one that, the, for the bowl, I did it on uh, my table saw for the wedgie sled. Oh, cool. Okay. Oh. I, use, I use my table saw, too. I don't have a wedgie sled. But I have a Craig miter jig, and that thing is, uh, as far as I know, the only miter jig more accurate than the Craig is the Incra. That's what I have. I have an Incra that I haven't used because it was I bought it, yeah. and it was set up for a shopsmith, and I don't have anything that would convert it. The the only this could be just the miter bar, right? Yeah. You should be able to buy a three-quarter inch miter bar. Carolyn, no. I just have it. Guy in class, blah, blah, blah. You're not supposed to write notes in class, right? But yeah, that I, I didn't get the Incra because I didn't have that kind of money at the time. And I still don't want to spend it. Um I, I, I got the Craig. Somebody cheap. Uh, oh, cool! I got the Craig because it was. Uh, it's my wife talking to my oh. grandson. I it. Um, yeah. The, but the Craig was within my price range, and I've been very, very happy with it. Yeah, I got the info on my fan so I like it. Well, guys, I'm going to have to let you go. All right. All right. You just have a good yeah, night. Dan, I probably ought to go, too. I need to finish doing some packing yeah. so that yeah. I'm not yeah. up real late and so I can get up early enough to finish packing in the morning and get out of here. Yeah, that'll yeah. work. I'm, so, I'm not going to stay on real late tonight myself. I get to go to the doctor and get some more, get another medial break real block done and Two to C4. Yeah, y'all have a good night. Have a good night, Billy. Right. Have fun at SWAT. Thank yes, sir. See you tomorrow, Clint. No. See you tomorrow. Actually, see you tomorrow. I should say the same thing, but I'm not leaving there early tomorrow. But whatever. Yeah, there you go. Right? You got plenty of time. What is it? Five hour drive, like Billy was saying? Uh, Google says three or three and a half, depending on when you. Oh, okay. Depending on where you go. Traffic, yeah. But yeah, my girlfriend's working her shift tomorrow until noon, so we're leaving between noon and one tomorrow. So. Oh, okay. So you're dragging Probably. her there, too, huh? Oh yeah. yeah right on. Taking a pin turning class, and uh, oh, they have some uh, events set up. They have a whole completely separate Facebook group for spouses of wood turners. It's why with different classes. Oh, okay. Super right. super top top secret classes. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, it kinda it, kinda sounds like there's some interest for doing something like that for the the tag alongs, the plus ones for level up. For Wisconsin. For Wisconsin. I, I looked at that. I'm like, yeah, well that's a good I that's a good reason for me to fly to Chicago again. Sure is, right? Get yourself some pizza and drive on up. Blue Malnati's, man. That's the place. Right. Yeah, I haven't had I haven't been through Chicago in five years. Can't even I looked at him. Probably. 
Milwaukee's one. Milwaukee's closer. Green Bay's closer, but Chicago's more interesting, I think, probably. Yeah. Well, that's definitely more interesting. Yeah. Make sure you drive with the doors locked and the windows rolled up. Get tented get tented windows if anything is possible. I've driven through the worst parts of Chicago already last time I was yeah. there. It just reminded me of home in Dallas. <laughs> I ain't afraid of people. Yeah. Just don't look at them wrong. Yeah, yeah. Right. You eyeball on me, boy? No. Hold the door for someone. Good chill. Yeah. Yeah. Why is it going to be in Wisconsin? Um, Scott did the initial legwork on on finding a finding a location. Okay. And because there's there's nothing there's nothing that goes on up in the uh, upper Midwest. And Minnesota sure as shit don't count. Minneapolis. AEW. So yeah, we got it. We got a real nice venue, and the venue is real cheap. I hadn't even pondered the lodging over there. Well, and then you know, hotels where is you know the, the typical metro metropolitan hotels, Hampton Inns. Holiday Inn Express, um, Fairfield Inns, you know, and then of course you got your Super Eights and Econo Lodges, which are even cheaper. Um, but, but the Fairfords and the Hampton Hampton Inns are uh, eighty dollars a night. You know, so no, well, it's got to be better than the that low rent when I stayed in for SWAT last year, right? You know, and then, yeah, I'm sure they got Airbnbs up there and Burbos, you know, shit. A group of guys or gals, you know, get together and, you know, probably be able to do a, you know, rent, rent a, rent a home as an Airbnb, you know, for the week, week, you Hopefully know, we have day. our pop up camper already and we just cruise on up. That's an easy yeah, drive. Yeah, there you go. Right. I do um, that driving a day almost. Right, right. At least yeah, I'll, can. Pro- I'll probably at least I'll can, probably just... do it, and I'll probably do it. And it'll probably take me two and a half days to get there. Nineteen. What the hell, just another hundred miles. I I can do that in two days. It's nineteen hundred miles from here to there, and for where I go at in, in Kentucky. Uh, it's it's eighteen hundred miles, so eh, yeah. I've done from Kansas City back to here before. That's a lot yeah. of the way. Right, it's all downhill from from there to there. Corn and soy, right? Corn and soy, yeah, a whole bunch, a whole bunch of flat land. Stand on a stand on your six pack of beer and you can see the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, right. That's what we used to say when we were up in North when, when we were stationed in North Dakota and stand on a beer can we could see Texas. Uh, uh. Granted it was a tall boy, but still it was a beer can. Don't waste our time with short boys. Yeah. So, what are you doing? Yeah, looking forward to it. Be fun. Yeah, Tucson. I've been seeing this guy on YouTube. It's from Tucson. No, he's from uh, Three Points. Oh, okay. And he has a thousand tattoos. Yeah. Go he figure. Has, he has tattooed eyeballs. Oh wow. What's he do? 
he said fuck you to Jersey and moved and bought an acre in three points. Three points. And is building his own shit. And building what? His own his own place. Oh, okay. Building his own structures. I'm like, got it. That's pretty good for a Jersey boy. Yeah, yeah, right. Respect. Man, and that ain't he, shit. Ain't shit in three points. Fucking crossroads, man. His name is Gats, G A T Z. So look him up. What's his name? Gats, G A T Z. Gats, G A T Z. Okay. I, I don't know what order things come in TikTok or YouTube shorts, but he's yeah. he's done a deli truck because there's no deli trucks in that area. Points. Right. Or, yeah, or two shit there. Trucks, apparently. It's a it's a fucking why. You know, you got one you got Aho coming in and then you got two side roads going out. You know, one goes well, Aho eighty eight goes to Yuma and then the other branch goes out to Tucson and then the other one goes kinda north by northwest towards Kingman. But they, there ain't they ain't shit. The only thing in there is that and the last time I was there was uh, probably 2008, 2009 time frame. There was a there was a big gap, uh, like a like a. I don't, even, I don't even think it had a real name, but it was a gas station convenience mart. They had a uh, you know some Mexicans in there that that had a little bruestro, you know, slinging enchiladas and, and tacos. Um, across the street there was a little bitty you know, U.S. post office. And that's what you were saying. There, there's burritos and tacos, great, but they need a a, a truck with deli sandwiches. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I thought I thought you have a look at him. Maybe you should buy yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, right. Aside from the fact that he looks like a total freak with how much ink he has, he's a very eloquent guy and a good handyman. Yeah. <clears throat> Take a look here on the old YouTube. Sean Gats, I think it is. Oh, God. Matt Gats comes up. Hey, Matt. <laughs> no, I couldn't remember. That's the congressman from Florida. What's his last name again? Oh, it's Sean, S E A N, Gats, G A T Z. Uh, G A T Z. There we go. Did, huh. did you watch uh, Deadpool? Yeah, uh, not the new one, not yet. No, but I just meant. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I'm, this I'm a fan a, of this. This is a younger Ryan Reynolds, if you listen to him speak. He's witty and kidding. fun and fast talking. Yeah. So. Oh, here we go. Installing tile floor. All right. Let's... Yeah, he's he's tatted. Oh yeah. Apparently he said he uh got the ten grand to buy that lot of land from TikTok or whatever, people watching him getting his taint tatted. Really? Or something wow. like that. Something private like that. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, that's a different generation wow. than me, but yeah, I hear you. You know, I mean, I mean, I've got, yeah. I've got a, some tattoos, but nothing like that. Jesus. I don't know. I don't know why a person would want to tattoo their face like that. 
I don't know, but you know I respect I mean? him for building his own shit. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, absolutely. There's yeah. So much respect on that. And like I said, he's out there in a very, very inhospitable environment. And with him being a white boy out there, he's definitely the minority. Um, I've suffered through 110 degrees in New Braunfels. That's worse than 110 in Tucson. Just well, for humidity. For, well, no, except for during the monsoon season. You get those sweaty days. I've lived in Houston, too. So. Yeah. Yeah, in Houston. And rename that place Swamp Ass. Yep. Yeah, it's been really humid. Yesterday it was really bad. It was like 75% humidity and fuck, it was 109 outside. So fuck. Inside inside here, Christ, it had to have been 120. Just hotter than hell, you know, and then it was wasn't until yesterday afternoon that I realized I, I was gonna need to demo. And so I took off, took the urn off that I've got in process that I hadn't touched in probably the last three weeks. I haven't, haven't even turned the lathe on in the last three weeks. And so last night I'm trying to, trying to figure out something to do, you know, sitting here thinking and pondering and I cut a couple, couple, uh, blanks, you know, off of, uh, you know, some, you know, some round logs that I had, you know, had in here, something small. And it turns out it was, yeah, anyhow, you know, so we'll get to that. That was today. And then I got a phone call. So and I was, you know, FaceTiming for like two hours. And so next thing you know, it's 10 30, 11 o'clock at night last night. And I'm getting ready to chuck the piece, you know, I, I, I put it between the centers. And, and I'm just sitting there, you know, I'm just, just sweating. Got my fan on, got the door open, both doors open, just, you know, praying for a breeze to come through and suck out some heat. You know, no, no such luck. Mosquitoes started coming in, closed everything down, still sitting here watching, watching stuff on TV, you know, the iPad air. And I'm like, man, screw this. It is, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, my jeans are, are soaked from sweat. Do rag is soaked with sweat and I'm sweating. I'm like, man, go inside, take a shower, put some clean clothes on and eat dinner and go at it again today. It was, I, Clint, I'll tell you, man, it was, it was miserable last night. Most miserable it's been, you know, all summer. So in this morning, you know, come in here. So I get in here about eight, eight thirty. And so I got that piece of wood on the on the lathe that I had put on and you know, and it came to me last night what to do, you know, to do a do an acorn box you know, style turning. So I'm turning it, got the cap done. And boy, you should have seen me trying to set the tendon on that one. Blow right through it, blow right through it, blow right through it. <laughs> okay. Oh my God, I was getting so frustrated this one. You know, and then I got it, you know, the right size, and then I put the put the lid on, and you know, and it and it goes on, and and by the time I bring the the tail stock back up, you know, to put the live center on it, you know, for support, you know, to turn, you know, to do the opposite end, that thing's spinning. It's ready. I mean, I could have just spun it by hand. You know, that thing would just fucking just rotate no problem and i'm like damn that thing was tight what what happened you know spin it you know cut the tendon off again make another one and i did this three different times bring the light you know and it's all loose again and then it hit me the piece of wood that i was using was a piece of yellow birch and it is so soft thirsty um uh, you know it, I, it wasn't punky or anything, but it's the uh, the dexterity of the grain uh, from end grain to side grain. It just it just erodes itself, um, and it compresses in on itself. Uh, the fibers do. Oh, you know, but 
you know, that was that was, you know, an hour, hour and a half of, of screwing with that before, you know, ding ding ding. Go get a piece of hardwood, you dummy. What are we using tonight? Maple? Um yeah, tonight was a piece of um red maple. But like I said, it was it was spalted. I didn't I didn't know it was spalted until I started started turning it and my God, that stuff was I mean, it's still hard, but but it was when you're used to turning, you know, you know hard than soft than hard. Right, right, yeah, you know, and, yeah. and so um, you know, just having that having that touch again, you know, again, you know, it'd been three weeks since I've I'd done anything and you know, that tool control was kinda lacking until until I got into things. Well, I'm going to take off, guys. I'll see you next week. Okay, sounds good, Roger. Right on, thanks, for, uh, thanks for doing that write-up, buddy. All right. I'll try to do another one. Okay. I don't know how Work. many people want to do segmented stuff, so majority of my stuff's all segmented. Yeah. No, it's eventually, eventually I am going to get into it. Um it, it may be something that I'm going to add to my repertoire for, depending upon how this juried auction thing goes, uh, that I'm trying to get into, um, because it, something southwest for these knuckleheads out here would be, I think, would command a, a, a pretty penny as well. So, so I'm, now I'm a little bit more open and, and more receptive to um, actually giving it a try, you know, so. You know, reading through that handout, you know, that you did, you know, when you initially sent it to me. I was like, oh, wow, this is a lot easier than I was, not as hard as I was making it out to be. I mean, it's still it's hard. Not but, that hard, really. Right. Yeah, it's all about, you know, blew up and, and cutting the angles and then your, 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 your wood coloring. Yeah. So, but yeah, I mean, it was, it, you really opened my eyes on it, Roger. Well, that's a disadvantage I have now is I don't have the places to buy the different kinds of woods that I was when I was out in California. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. You might uh, check. I don't know how much he would have, but um, uh, I was my um, Matheson, uh, Arizona Silhouette. You know, he's there in Aurora. Missouri. The classic nib. And I'm pretty sure he's got exotic woods there. All right. Well, I will see you guys next week. All right, Roger. Take care. Hi, Roger. Good night. Good night. Probably, no, Dave, you need to do all your selling in Sedona. That place is way overpriced. It's it's saturated though. Um, is it? I used to, yeah, I used to um, back. I don't know, shit to two thousand nine to about twenty thirteen. Um, I used to take stuff up to um, uh, not necessarily Sedona, but to uh, Jerome, and there was a couple places up there that I would put stuff in. Um, but the amount of wood turnings um, between Jerome and, and and over in Sedona, it, it fuck everybody's got shit there. And and like you said, you know, I mean, it's definitely overpriced. Um, but yeah, you know, what what I'm trying to get into, um, it's they do it annually, and they're affiliated. Who the fuck are they affiliated with? I can't even remember the name of it. So, long story short, there was a guy two years ago. I was in an office, Max, getting copies made of something, and I had uh, had one of my Carter and Son shirts on, and it's got the lathe on the back, you know. And this old guy pecks me on the shoulder and, and says hi and and asks me, you know, if 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 I did. Uh, Lathe turning, you know, 
wood wood stuff on the lathe. And I'm like, well, wait, yeah, as a matter of fact, I do. It didn't even dawn on me, you know, about the shirt, you know, lathe on the back of it, you know. So and I'm I'm like, I go, I go, I'm curious as to why you're asking me that. You know, we're waiting in line to check out. And it's so, so random, you know, so, and he says, oh, you know, because of your shirt. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. I put a lathe on the back of it. And so he starts telling me about this place. And, 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 you know, talking about, you know, how it's high end, you know, talking thousands of dollars, you know, that, that you can sell shit for if you got, if you got good stuff. And so he asked, you know, to see some, you know, if I had any pictures and I'm like, well, yeah, as a matter of fact, I do, you know? And, you know, so I showed him, a, you know, some, some pictures and he was like, oh, wow, there ain't nothing like this. And, um, in the, in the gallery shows, you know, at least in the years past. And, you know, so he said he was a painter and that, you know, he always, he always gets at least one painting in and, you know, and he's selling stuff, you know, person between you and me and my daughter she can paint but i'm pretty sure my daughter can make a painting an oil oil painting better than him and the one that he sold last in last year's in 2023 gallery was either 4700 or 4800 you know for a 18 by 20 oil painting you know and so anyhow you know so he said you know you ought to, you ought to look into it and and make sure that, oh, and then he asked me to, you know, what I would sell, you know, he picked something other, you know, some hollow form that I had, nondescript, you know, definitely not my best. And he, he goes, how much would you sell that for? And I go, I don't know, maybe 300. He looks at me and he goes, he goes, yeah, you need to add a, add a zero to that. And I'm like, ah, oh, get out of here. He's like, no, seriously. He goes, he goes so, so if if you if you get in or you know when when you're out here applying, make you know don't sell yourself short. He goes, these are all rich people, and what happens is, is you got Joe and Susie. Susie sees that Joe likes this piece, and you've got your reserve price on it. And so Joe's bidding on it, and Susie sees that Joe Joe wants it. Susie bids on it, and then they start going back and forth. Just because one doesn't want the other one to have it. I'm like, no hot, shit. Hot blocking each other, huh? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, you know, just you know, like like the old the old fucks that would, you know, go to the implement auctions, you know, when, when you got a got a poor farmer there that's trying to buy a piece of equipment and you got some asshole there running the price up on you, you know? Mm -hmm. Um so yeah, you know, I'm like, yeah, okay. You know, so I got all you know, you know, as you can tell from my post, you know, I bought a I bought a nice uh, light box, 32 inch square. Got a got a nice turntable for it um, with a mirror. It's got um, got three LED light bars. Way too many lights, in my opinion. I got to figure out a way to. Well, the, the top I had a diffuser for, but um, so I brought one of them down so I could put the light, you know, light in front of it, you know, to go out and got the light coming down. Um, but I still had light reflecting off the finish on, on the front, but still the, you know, the photos were, you know, a thousand percent better than any of my photos I'd taken in the past. Better than me because so, I had a cardboard box spray painted white inside. Yeah. Yeah. Initially, that's what I was going to do, you know, and my, and my wife says, she goes, Jesus Christ, if you're going to do this, do it right. You know, um, you know, go, go buy, go buy what you need. And, and, you know, so I did. And I'm like, all right. Cause I, I had a box out and I was already spray painting it white, you know, and she's like, what are you doing? I'm like, make it, making like uh, a photo box. She's like, Jesus Christ, what is it with you wood turners? You know, whenever you guys think you can save, save a couple pennies, you, you try to do things half ass and you're just going to get half results on it I'm like, we're not saving I'm pennies fine. it's like we spend so much damn money on wood blanks <laughs> i know right and i spend, yeah you know so, so i, I spent got my shit a hundred dollars worth of my time to make a 20 dollar bowl yeah yeah right laughable yeah 
Yeah, so, so yeah, you know, so I got those three pieces in. I had to write a bio. I didn't know I had to write a bio, you know, bio on myself. And, and it was neat, you know, the website, you know, it had had a page where somehow or another I got to it to where I could see, you know, the 2023 people. And so I went through all the stuff that was sort of people that got in. And there were, you know, some dude had made a, he put in two items, uh, that, that squall that I screenshotted and put on, on the post. And then another guy had three little fucking feathers. And I think the longest one was eight inches by inch and a half. And they were carved. But I shit you not looking at them. They weren't, yeah, they were carved, but they weren't hand carved. They were carved by a fucking laser. Modern technology. Hey, you know, right. You know, hey, you know, good on him, you know, and, you know, and he sold all three feathers. I think the, the cheapest one was 1300 1300 1900 and 2100 And I'm like, holy fuck. Okay, I'm going to set my prices accordingly, you know, for the for the three pieces that I submitted. So I only mentioned Sedona because of my first yeah. anniversary with my first wife. That might have been eighteen or twenty years ago. Yeah, and we we flew to Phoenix, and it was 110 in May. Yeah. And we went to Williams, and it was yep. snow on 80. the ground. Yeah. Oh, we came, yeah. Wow. We, yeah. We came back through Sedona and shopped around. And everything is all hippy dippy in that town, and yeah, boy, really expensive hippies, I guess. Yes, yes. So they're yeah, very getting, getting more expensive. Very, yeah, yeah. They looked at me funny back then when I was driving through in my pickup truck, and I can just imagine what they would look at me now. That same pickup truck with even less paint on it. Yeah, just throw on one of those fake uh, Marley. Yeah, right. Big, you know, put put some put some uh, fake uh, corn rolls in. Yeah, and, uh, and just just have them, just have them hang from the back of the rag. Right. Yeah, we did a weekend. A uh, weekend. It was like I don't know four days. It was right after tax season, and so I needed I needed to just fucking get away and 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 let loose you know and well you do accounting don't you yeah Fuck. and uh well you know i, I worked at it in a main job you know i was a controller for for the company you know multi-million dollar defense company uh private and then i had i had my own tax business and of course i got rid of everything died you know stopped all that you know and 20, 2018, you know, hung it all up. Um, but yeah, you know, so anyhow, you know, so I uh, always called a, a annual after tax season, you know, April, April 20th, that weekend for four days, five days, my, my decompression trip. And so she found a, found a, you know, had, had a live, uh, had a live band on, on, Friday and Saturday night, hotel upstairs. But I'll be damned if if they didn't put us in the fucking room that was right above the, the bar and right above where the where the band stage was. And I guess it wasn't bad because the first night there, you know, I tied one on. I gave the bartender, I gave her fifty dollars. And I told her, and they had they had Guinness on on tap. I told her I go when, when my beer gets halfway, halfway empty, start pouring me another one and bring it to me unless I tell you otherwise. And then right. every fifth every fifth beer, bring me uh, two shifters of uh, McCallum twenty five. 
And so every five beers, you know, I had a highball, good scotch. And dude, man, I, I got, I got ripped that first night. It sounds like a good night and a but good man. Good for sure. Man, we had, a, we had, a, we had a good time, you know, and then after, you know, when you know, we stayed till, you know, the bar closed and you know, we just had to pour ourselves back upstairs and, you know, and then there at the end, you know, I gave her another, another hundred dollars for taking care of me and, and taking care of my wife. Yeah, it was, it was a good time, you know, and then the following Saturday, we kind of chilled out. And of course, I was, you know, extremely hung over, but, you know, we're out doing the tourist thing, you know, you know, on that Saturday, and then we came down and had some, had some drinks, but, you know, we called it early, you know, 10, 11 o'clock at night, and when we went back up, you know, at bands just to play and hooting and hollering, I'm like, shit, I should have just stayed down there. <laughs> <laughs> of all the bachelor parties I've been to I think my own was the one that I was the most sober at kind of sad yeah <clears throat> yeah I never had one um, I think I'm I think I only went I've only ever gone to two A buddy of mine in Korea and another buddy when I was in Holland. Well, we had this strip club in Dallas. It was owned by the guys from Pantera, so that was a top. Oh, place. nice. Yeah, my sister in law used to date um, Old Red from uh, Pantera back in the 80s. I don't even know what his name was. I can't remember his name. I, he, he's dead now. <laughs> I just yeah. red. He was an ugly redhead. Ugh. Which never met him. And my sister-in-law, she's a very pretty lady. Not as pretty <laughs> as his wife. But... You guys... End every sentence with that phrase, right? What's that? Not oh, as good uh, as my wife. Yes, yes. Never know who's listening. Always. I'm poor to know. Yeah, I hear so many people talk about, you know, having a bad, bad wife, and always being on their ass, full of shit. Um, Fortunate that mine's not like that. I've had a couple. My new girlfriend is not. Yeah, that's good. Oh. Yeah, my first wife was a fucking cunt. Hence that bitch being, I got rid of her. Uh, she got rid of herself. She screwed around on me, and I got I wasn't going to take it. I got rid of her. We hadn't even we barely cohabitated for five months. I don't know how you do that specifically, but withholding is just as bad as stepping out, pretty much. Yeah, it sure is. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's that's bad shit too. Yeah, because that makes you wonder, oh, are you getting it somewhere else? Yeah, and for my last one, it's like putting your friend slash ex-husband and kids ahead of me. Yeah. And it's not sexual, but, no. Yeah, I hear you. Kind of I agree. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> No, that's funny, you know, she's got two sisters, you know, so her youngest sister, Margaret, that's the one I was talking about, you know, so Tina and, and her, they got the, they got the looks. Tina's the only one that have common sense between the two of them. And then they got a middle sister. And so she started off being a wild, crazy girl, you know, as a teenager, then she got married. 
by the time she was 18 and 19 to a religious zealot. And so she went down the, the religious zealot end. But it turns out he was a, a pervert. He was addicted to porn. And nobody knew it until later years, I guess. And so they got divorced about 10 years ago. And they lived um, was it Bedford. Bedford, right outside of Dallas. Oh, yeah, right outside of Fort Worth. Yeah, yeah. So they they lived, you know, they had a they had a real nice, you know. He he worked for IBM, program manager there. Been there for twenty years until until his sex addiction caught up to him there at work. And uh, got at one point, you know, they were. They were going to sell everything, and they were going to go to Indonesia and be missionaries, which was mind-boggling. You know, it's, Indonesia is only the largest Muslim population in the world, you know. You don't go there and try and preach Christianity? Wow. Uh, Good on you. Good on you. But it's like I mean, that guy got, who tried to do missionary to uh, Sentinel Island. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, just like him. And you uh, get shot, right? You know, so something happened, and, and so that didn't take place. And then I guess you know the, the the sex addiction shit, you know, came to came to light, and so they got a divorce. You know, so they got four kids. Three of them are three of them are autistic. One is really really bad. The other one's got that. Functioning higher, higher learning, but <laughs> she says, you know, she said, she says whatever comes to her. Anyhow, you know, so you know they got had a fucked up family, right? So and so they get divorced. She comes out here to Phoenix. She's going to become a uh, motorcycle mechanic. So she signs up, you know, one of those motorcycle mechanic schools, ATI or. MTI or something along those lines. And then, then she finds out, you know, basically that's just a fucking scam. And yeah, they're just trying to make yeah. money. Yeah, right. And, uh, yeah, and then and she, and she started all of a sudden liking, liking black talk and, and really went downhill. And then from there, you know, that she went to, Massachusetts got no self esteem in some black talk. <laughs> I heard one guy on YouTube today. I did a lot of driving. I went down to Corpus for work and all the way back. One guy said the best advice he got when he had, when he started to have daughters, children was tell them you love them. Yes. Because that protects yes. them from uh, having that uh, daddy complex, as they say. Right. <clears throat> yep, daddy issues. Yep. And then treat your mother, treat your mother correctly. With respect. Yeah. They're going to fight, go fight in the outhouse or something. Right. And, uh, you know, and then that way, you know, the girl grows up to look for a self-respecting man instead of one that's, you know, ain't worth a shit, looking for a sugar mama. And then, oh, by the way, also wants to treat you like shit because that's all you're used to seeing. And, well, dad treated your mom like that, so it must be okay. Yeah, and keep your yeah. children off the internet until they're yep. like 16, probably. Yep. That's basically what I did. In the later years, you know, I found out, you know, she was, Amber was doing shit behind her back, but, you know, online and whatnot. But, you know, at the same time, you know, compared to others, she was a, she was an angel, you know, I was hard as fuck on her, you know, and especially when she was little, she'd fuck up and it. And it wanted getting her hind end paddled. Yeah, she caught the hand. And, you know, she, you know, 
to this day, you know, she looks, you know, we, she had us over for dinner, cooked, uh, made dinner for us for the first time in her new house, uh, last Saturday. And, and anytime we get together, you know, which is, you know, at least every two weeks, uh, most times she comes over here and, uh, you know, she thanks us, you know, Tina and me, you know, profusely, you know, for being hard on her, telling her, you know, she's good. She's worth something. Um, you're going to, you're going to go far, but you know, you got to work hard at it. Boom. Here she is. And fuck, she making $85 an hour doing, um, occupational therapy for, and she specializes in autistic kids. 85. Yeah. Shit. That's more than me. I know, right? It's definitely more than me now. Yeah. She's 27 and shit. When I was 27, when I was 27, I was a GS9 for the federal government. I was barely making 31,000 a year. What? 18, 17, 18 dollars an hour? Yeah. yeah. She's doing good. I mean, I might have been at 15 or 20. By that time, I think it was like by 30 or 35 that I caught up with how much my dad was making working for the city of Dallas. Yeah. No, yeah, it wasn't until no, no, state he, side. No, no, sorry. He, he left city of Dallas. He went private. He got more money. But still, I think I'm ahead of him right. now. But yeah. <clears throat> his health care costs are way more than mine. Yeah. What is it you do? IT, right? Yeah. Yeah, I do server network engineering stuff. stuff. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, my calculus, my old calculus teacher, he used to always give me a hard time, tell me I should, I should be doing uh, IT specifically doing programming. It's not called you, got the app, for it. you got the aptitude for it, Dane. You need to be doing that. You'll make more money. It's not called programming anymore. It's called coding. Coding. Yeah. Coding. And you got dipshits doing it. Yeah. Right. These days. I wouldn't doubt it. For my day, you knew how to do everything top to bottom on a piece of hardware. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. Yep. Yeah, I did a little bit of C++, you know, on, on my own. I taught myself years ago. Enough to be dangerous. How would you say the the days of the uh, multi-talented handyman are gone? Yes. Yep, I agree. I learned from my dad. I can weld as I need to. I can do plumbing as I need to. I can do shit, whatever. Right. It's a, it's a frame of mind, you know? Right. Yep. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm, I'm the same way. Yeah, I'd love it. Well, this land sale goes through on, on my land up in Ohio that I'm trying to sell. Build a shit, build a, build a proper shop in the backyard. That's one of the things I want to get as a as a welder. But there's many a time, and I can probably count them on my hand, both hands. But regardless, you know, one time is more than more than enough valid reason to go buy something. You know, you know but I, you know, and especially with my metal work, you know, when, when I'm playing around with knives, um, it'd be nice to be able to weld something up. Or, or now, like with hook tools and ring tools that I've been trying to make, have been making, it'd be nice to be able to get them welded myself instead of having, you know, going to somebody else and having them do it. I have how many forges now and a nice big anvil my dad gave me, but fuck no, I'm not doing anything in August. Oh, I know, right? Yeah, in the summertime, it's just If, if I go in the back, I might, maybe. 
But right yeah. now, the only shed I have in the back it has my lawnmower and my gas canisters in it. So that's not the right place. Uh huh. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I've got my new forge on a double burner. It's about it's about three foot long. Three foot. Man. Yeah. My dad gave me yeah. one. He made a, a break drum. You know, like oh, like okay, forty, thirty years ago. He gave me that one. I built my own propane one. Yeah, yeah. From scrap. Yeah, I got one of them too. And I bought years. one off Amazon a few months ago, which is not really better than what I made, but it has hinged doors on it. Right. Yeah. It's way with this one here. I think it's but I, I think it's twelve twelve inches or fourteen inch square. I mean, double double venturi burner. Two yeah, that one has two burners. The one I built only had one, so yeah, yeah, yeah. mine too. It's like I buy I buy better tools, but I gotta find the time to actually use them. Uh, yeah, don't. Yeah, so I've, I've had that for two years now. I'm, should I have any pulled it out and put the put the kale wool in or put the refractory cement on it yet? Oh, I did that the first day and burned it in, but I haven't done shit with it yet. After that, that was a my, that was like the yearly bonuses in March. I bought one. That was one of the things I bought. You know, so. right? Cool. Yeah, that's yeah. I'm not using it. Yeah, and it's just getting hot. Yeah, it's fun stuff. Yeah, that's one thing about you know being retired, and not making that extra money and. <laughs> Kind of a pain in the ass when you, you know, when you used to just go fucking buy it. So now you got to put back for it, and then go buy it. Well, and you realize, oh, I just how bad do you really want it or need it? That's one thing I'll say. I'm glad about being in the IT industry. I don't have to retire anytime soon. Yeah, I can do that and you work. always have a job. Yeah. I can do that work for. 50 more years, it's fine. Mm -hmm. As long as my brain is Yeah. Up. Right. Yeah, I hear you on that. It's, you know, same with the accounting and finance profession. It's not like I can it's do the physical labor by, uh, itself instead of as a job. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yep. You know, physical labor here at the house, physical labor for other people. Mm, not so much. Yeah, for money. Or for people I like. Yeah. yeah, for people I like, you know. It's all good. You don't have an AC on your shop yet? Nope. But there will be in the new one if I'm able to build it. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I put a mini spell on this one as soon as I... Uh... Bought this house six years ago. Big, great improvement. Oh, I bet. Then you know, I I fucked up the flare connection, so I had to refill it again. Yeah. And then it fucked up while my ex-wife was here before I took it back and had to refill it again. But hey, it, yeah. at least it's using. Uh, R134, so that's cheap. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be nice to have it. Oh, really bad. You know, first, you know, July and August, it's, it's really bad here, but yeah. It's like August is almost over, so. These past days, it's like the air conditioner can't keep up to open the door. Yeah. I open the door until like 9 30 at night, maybe not hot. So were you on at the at the beginning of the program for the whole demo? Uh yeah. Oh, okay. Good. Yeah. I got on like a before six thirty. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't see you come in.
it's funny, you know, now, you know, using a laptop out here plus the phone. And when I was just on my phone, I used to, you know, I'd, I'd see everybody, you know, the phone coming, you know, the names popping up on my phone. I can either admit them or get rid of them. And, and now that I got the two devices, for whatever reason, the, the way they, they come across on, on the top of the, Laptop, I, I don't see I don't see the names as readily available anymore, except for when I bring up you know the participants list and go looking specifically for someone. It sure does make it a lot nicer functionality wise using the laptop compared to the phone. For the believe I did that for four and a half years on the fucking phone. It's crazy. For sure, I'm I'm always in the shop using this iPad. My only sneaky gripe is that whenever I join, it automatically turns on the camera. <laughs> I'm like, I'll be yeah. seen. Right. That's right. Right off the bat. Who else is out here being quiet? Oh, it's just you and me. Oh. Oh. I see. Wait a minute. There's five Dave. Under. Johnny. Oh. Yeah, Dave's already gone to bed. 